Good evening, uh, everyone. And today we have a distinguished panelist to discuss a very important topic, enabling creativity online. For this panel, we have uh, Dr. Vishal Kalwa, Director, IMT Ghaziabad, Professor Rajiv Mishra, Director of Art, Government of Maharashtra and Principal Sir JJ College of Architecture, University of Mumbai, Professor A.K. Singh, Vice Chancellor, Sri Sri University, Professor Dr. S.S. Sahagal, Registrar, Chandigarh University. And this panel will be moderated by Mohamed Yaman, Solution Consultant, Digital Media, uh, Adobe. Thank you so much and thank you everyone for joining us. Over to you, Amit. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I welcome all of you once again and thank you for your time. Uh, I am your host, Mohamed Yaman, Solution Consultant, Digital Media, Adobe, for the next one hour. Okay, so uh, and thank you all, all, all the panelists for for their time uh, for this particular session. And uh, so, as all of you are aware that over the last two years, uh, we have been passing through very challenging time. Uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic has affected very adversely the education system of the country. Uh, the teaching and learning process was suddenly disrupted due to. Lockdown uh, in 2020. Gradually, uh, we adopted online mode of teaching and learning. Uh, but in this all connection, various type of problem came up, uh, which need to, which I feel we need to discuss. So, uh, with that said, let me open the panel with my first question. That is, what exactly are the challenges uh, your institutions are facing in transitioning the instruction process from? Face to face to online uh, teaching mode under this COVID 19 pandemic. And uh, I would like to start with Dr. Sagal. Uh, you are registrar in, in a Chandigarh University. So I'm sure many of the challenges you face. So let's start with you and then uh, I, I will take it forward with the other panelists to uh, they can also share their views. Uh, over to you, Dr. Sagal. Uh, thank you, Yaman. Uh, Actually, what we have experienced in the you know last one and a half year during the COVID pandemic time, you know, uh, it was a drastic shift from a regular mode of teaching to an online mode of teaching. Uh, especially, we have seen in the you know the students who are uh, you know they are uh, from the cities as well as the urban background. Uh, there it was fine, but uh, the students who are from the rural background, uh, they have uh, experienced a lot of challenges, especially because of the availability of the internet and other issues. Uh, in terms of the digital transformation, uh, if I give an example of Chandigarh University, uh, Chandigarh University, uh, since we were using the learning management system, so it was easy for us, but uh, obviously when we have seen the other universities also, uh, it was a lot of challenges. Uh, I, I hope uh, I can uh, start in a note uh, where we have discussed the challenges. Uh, over to Yaman. Yeah, uh, I think I think this uh, digital transformation is something very, very important point. You bring it. Uh, I would like to move to the Professor Rajiv Mishra. Uh, like you are into uh, like uh, uh, in the College of Architecture where the creativity is also very, very important. So uh, how what was the challenges for you? How you tackle them or uh, are you still facing some kind of challenges even after one and a half years? Uh, Professor Nisha, you are on, on mute. So, uh, Good afternoon. Am I audible to all of you? Yes. yes. Uh, good afternoon to all the panelists and fellow colleagues, the audience. Thank you for inviting me to be able to share my ideas. I would like to begin by saying that when it comes to art and architecture education at Sir JJ School of Art campus, we had to deal with two issues. One is the grammar and the other is the communication of this grammar. Grammar involves you to learn the tools and techniques of handling your instruments so that you can express it. Your express expression is through paintings, through drawing and other mediums of illustrations, which is taught by demonstration and which is taught by 
helping you learn to understand how to use the tools the second aspect is related to communication now to communicate how to think and how to bring this idea on paper was a challenge and these challenges were not very easy to communicate because i think these challenges were not in confirmation with video and digital communication and therefore we had a big issue of communicating with students how to use their tools and how to communicate their ideas it was a great challenge uh, even for teachers to learn how to teach okay it was not only students to learn but also for teachers how to teach and i will be surely sharing some of the ideas and what we did to be able to succeed in communicating this idea after i hear from all the other panelists thank you yama sure sure uh, dr tilwar uh, what's your view on this how your institution has tackled this particular challenge so thank you very much uh, thank you very much for inviting me here and uh, uh, it's actually a pleasure uh, i've recently transitioned from one institution to the other so i'll possibly give you a a combination experience uh, to be able to get a, a better picture sure. so certain areas that uh, have obviously been affected and have been a challenge uh, not from the time uh, march of 2020 one uh, big area has been learning styles right so uh, students participants have varied learning styles and sometimes these learning styles may not have been captured in how we went about our business as far as the blended or uh, the digital approach to learning is concerned the other area that we uh, obviously face a challenge and i'm sure that's still a challenge in most places is learning capacities it's so automatically when i talk about learning capacities um when you have different learning styles you have different learning capacities capabilities uh, some are more amenable to the online mode some are not necessarily as amenable to the online mode uh, how we approach the learning how we would like to learn uh, are we able to learn by ourselves or we require a lot of guidance uh, so that's the other uh, challenge the next challenge uh, and something that uh, professor mishra highlighted is uh, teaching capacity so it's not just learning capacities but it's also teaching capabilities capacities how you're able to transition from the offline learning mode into the online mode. so you would know uh, notice that a lot of people or a lot of faculty um, completely transitioned from the offline mode into the online mode carrying the same tools along with them uh, when i use the word tools you know everybody uses certain tools certain techniques certain ways of going about their, their teaching um, so a lot of um, online learning was happening as an extension of what we actually did in the offline mode and that's something which obviously is a bit of a question mark Uh, because the online world actually requires a very different approach to uh, teaching and learning one other challenge i'm sure a lot of people faced uh, was the assessment right how do you assess the students so automatically that also became uh, a bit of a challenge whether it's continuous assessment whether it is end term assessment all these things became an issue curriculum um, limitations became an issue as well you, you had curriculum when a lot many times the focus always is on completing the syllabus quite frankly in the online mode completing a syllabus takes a very different definition altogether of course apart from that uh, engagement experiential uh, learning approaches the peer learning the motivation all these things obviously came across as limitations uh, for a lot of um, institutions uh, for a lot of faculty how do you inculcate that how do you ensure you reduce the fatigue i'm sure we'll have longer discussions as we go forward so i just wanted to briefly talk about some of the challenges i kind of looked at and uh, worked on as we um, engaged with this pandemic crisis in the learning context thank you very well said uh, dr kalwar i think uh, some of the pointer which you talk about like experiential learning uh, peer collaboration and uh, the assessment and teaching uh, capability which you which dr mishal is also talked about i think these are some challenges uh, i would like to move on to uh, 
professor singh and uh, i'm sure you also facing a similar kind of challenges in your university and you are a vice chancellor of the university so how you see this entire shift from face to face to online any kind of strategy you build up, uh, around it when you shifted from face to face to online over to you uh, professor singh thank you very much mohammad yaman ji good afternoon to all of you the steam panelists and others uh, it is a pleasure to be on your platform today uh, sharing the journey which started in march 2020 we were in our boardroom having a meeting on that day that if the government uh, announces lockdown then or some restrictions then what will happen we were you know discussing several options what we should do and while we were in the meeting after an hour or so we came to know that uh, the honorable chief minister of odisha has announced in the assembly <laughs> that it will be locked down in odisha it was before the national lockdown was actually announced so we were in the midway of you know thinking what to do if this happens and uh, that happened uh, at that time itself while we were on the way thinking about it so by the evening we organized uh, a training program for all the faculty members that uh, you all have you know gmail accounts you we have google suite we have access to google classrooms and uh, all these things were there with us and uh, zoom accounts were there lms we did not have at that time we have now ssulms.in but uh, on that friday evening itself we said that uh, let everybody be trained on this our it team organized training programs for them so that from monday the classes uh, would be you know in the online mode and everybody geared up and uh, there was no loss of even a single day of teaching actually i must compliment all my teachers that they shifted very swiftly onto this then the next question came that you know what uh, dr vishal was also talking about and others have said it is not just uh, the same you know classroom which was there in the physical mode you can't imagine like that so uh, we we conducted workshops for bloom's taxonomy that you know your question paper that you gave in the previous semester just bring those question paper in the workshop and let us have you know assessment of those question papers in terms of where do they stand in terms of level 1 2 3 4 5 6 of the bloom's taxonomy how many are of level 1 they remember understand analyze you know apply analyze evaluate and create so where where do they stand and if you want to really have the effectiveness in the teaching learning process in the online mode you have to have more focus on the you know levels which are 4 5 6 instead of level 1 2 where most of the attention was there in the physical mode so we we said that you first assign yourself that out of all the question that you have given which levels each one of these were and then get it reviewed from one peer person you know who teaches similar kind of paper what you are teaching and then get it vetted by the head or the dean and then bring it to the person who is actually you know conducting the workshop uh, so that you can be you know told that whether you are uh, what assessment that you have done is it belongs to level 3 or 2 or 4 whether it is correct or not and then they were asked to go back and come back with a new question paper that okay if you have to do more of the higher levels then how do you address those things how do you make questions and all that so unless you evaluate people on certain parameters they are not going to learn in that the assessment and evaluations are very critical aspects of what people would behave or how they they would behave actually while uh, you are conducting a session if you don't ask them a question at all uh, they will be locked in you know and what they are doing you don't know uh, so unless after every you know there is some intervention which requires them to interact with you is not going to give you food so engagement word was you know there the last speaker said about that dr vishal i think so how you you know modify your teaching learning process so that the engagement is on the both sides uh, you know and it is more driven from the other side like now in the lms mode uh, what we are doing now is the flip classroom concept that you share the you know material with them in advance the videos are with them and they are supposed to come back with the questions to be discussed in the classroom so it's now going to the next level that you know it's it's not the physical now the blended is coming now we are asking them to uh, come back to the you know university those who were requiring the practicals to be done like osteopathy we are the first university in asia to have osteopathy where manual physical interaction is required with the patient and unless you touch the patient it it doesn't work 
so it is a manual therapy uh, without any invasion of any kind so they they were the first one to come and join then agriculture students came now uh, unless the parents allow uh, they are not supposed to come we can't force them to come so the challenge was not that much in moving from physical to online the challenge is more in bringing them back to the university you know in in the in the physical mode or in the blended mode when other things are there you know for how many hours you can you know, have student and teachers both in the online mode connected so people were complaining about you know how many hours we should continuously you should have gaps and this and that so new new kind of complaints started coming in in the examination we found we were about 99% of the students were able to appear in the exam uh, so that was almost uh, equivalent to what otherwise happens in the face to face or the physical mode that examinations were happening proctored examination we did so the challenge was not in the first step challenge is now coming more uh, after we have gone to that mode. okay so now i think we can say like as we uh, coming out of this pandemic uh, to the towards the endemic a new kind of challenge is coming up where calling back students uh, to the college uh, that is something arising and i have something around that also i have some uh, questions uh, and thoughts around that also which i will share with uh, all of you and i think uh, uh, professor sir i you actually pointed out very rightly i remember Uh, in the first and the second week of march last year it was like every college weekend was occupied in training all the faculties uh, from the it team on how to use these kind of uh, digital tools lms system and how to how to make sure that no uh, days should go lapse into the training of faculties and classes should run as as smooth as possible so uh, with, uh, with with that said after listening all of you uh, i i feel that we are passing through a stage of digital first okay or a or a or a digital uh, uh, environment so in this connection we know that creativity and digital are no longer an option but they have become very very essential now nowadays creativity is also required in every field uh, earlier creativity was something related with arts but now you have to show creativity and, and innovation whatever you are doing in whichever domain uh, you are but uh, it has virtually become our present and future that we are working in this uh, uh, digital environment and many colleges around the world uh, move into permanent blended mode where half of the content will be synchronous and asynchronous sort of a thing so in this shift of instructional technology where the entire globe uh, is moving to synchronous asynchronous and blending the first fundamental aspect that comes out is how can we create professionals who are re- ready to take on various challenges in a creative and innovative way because most of the education is now moving uh, i would not say online but most of the education is moving towards blended or synchronous and asynchronous mode so how how can we make sure that our students are equally creative and innovative even in this new mode of teaching so i would like uh, uh, professor mishra to talk about it first because you again uh, from architecture you i'm sure you are facing these challenges and then we'll move on to the other panelist uh, on this part yeah over to you professor mishra uh, you are mo- you are on mute uh, professor mishra see i i would like to thank my fellow panelists for highlighting all the issues which i was going to speak on but there are two things before i really share my experience one is you have to be creative to teach creativity so so what i am trying to tell you is that teaching is a profession art and architecture is a profession but teaching art and architecture is the third profession okay this is what we realized and then to understand the digital medium to use it in a manner that you are able to communicate the perception you know the idea of a great teacher or any teacher is to see that the student gets it okay so how do you basically teach this curious craft you know art and architecture is a curious craft and you know one idea may follow all the laws of design and yet be worthless while still another may have 
broken up all the principles and be profound you know so how do you first communicate a exercise okay how do you tell a student that this is the exercise we are going to do now and we are going to come up with imagination i'll give you one example we gave an exercise of designing mementos and the project of designing mementos was inauguration of a new airport okay so how will you design a memento for the people who are actually going to be visiting the inauguration of the airport now generally inauguration of airport is a civil aviation activity but what we wanted to say was that the people coming for it should be given a memento so that they don't even have this idea that they are only attending a inauguration function but they are also going to get something so creative about the airport okay so our students were asked to come up with ideas many students decided to do the model of the airport some people took the airplane model some people did the graphic design of the local environment so that people feel a connection between the airport and the surrounding environment so the idea was to basically come out with thought processes that will celebrate not only the airport design but also the environment around it okay and there was one student who basically came from a rural background and he designed the impact of the airport on the environment okay so he 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 designed a memento in such a way that it showed the impact of the airport that will have on the rivers that will have on the impact on the small villages he he actually made a memento out of it and therefore he said protect them because no matter your airport is important but the memento should carry a message that these need to be protected i think it was a wonderful idea many issues of access to digital education is a problem so what what we did was we basically saw to it that we gave them exercises in the morning we met them after 2 hours with so that they could use minimum data to communicate where they would present their ideas and our teachers would actually express their thoughts and gave them feedback on the basis of what they did and then there was another break for 1 hour 2 hour so that whenever they came back with all the feedback they came out with the final version the similar thing we did in architecture where the students were given a design project they were given the design requirements so that when they find architectural solutions it has to be apt and it has to deliver so whenever you make an architectural statement through a building design what is it that you want to say and what is it that you want to produce so they projected their drawing on their ipads and on their computers and each teacher actually explained them and lastly when it comes to assessment i think uh, professor singh said about the assessment value you know i think as long as we assess any project and as long as we are in a position to tell them how to correct them and give them time to come back to us of course digitally they do a very good job and one thing which i want to share and i don't know whether it happened to other subjects also the students became bolder because what was happening was when a student was explaining design he was not with other classmates he was at his home doing a design and he was not affected by what was happening to the peers he was not able to see the design of other students while he was designing and he came out with an impact and started expressing himself or herself so boldly that the teacher was surprised that a student who was actually not so brilliant offline suddenly became became brilliant online and this idea of digital learning now we can also promote blended learning but this idea of digital learning actually opened up many minds of the student and i think that was a great success of this digital mode of learning we had to basically upgrade our institutions upgrade our teachers methods of teaching and teachers are now that they have learned are using it so profusely that they want to continue to use it even if we start colleges offline you know and i think that's the success of this impact of pandemic now teachers feel confident now teachers feel that they have learned from their students better 
and now they feel the teachers feel that they are communicating with the students in a better way so i think pandemic had a very positive impact on teachers who were artists they only thought that they could uh, communicate by drawing and making students learn in front of them through their demonstration but once you leave a student with themselves and once you tell them now you have the freedom to do the way you want i think they come out better so the impact that we see due to digital learning has actually helped us because a student have come out with full force and it didn't matter whether you know they were being seen by their peers they, it didn't matter whether they were doing better or worse what mattered was they got an opportunity to present themselves boldly they never did presentation we have a studio form of learning we learn in groups and where every teacher has to teach 15 students in a group in a studio where you know the learning is with peers but here the learning was individual and i think that worked very well okay and uh, examination the last part which i would like to say we had to conduct examination as per the rules of the university we conducted theory papers where we went on google meet we proctored them we uploaded our question papers we saw with them for 2 hours answering it for the first time teachers learned how to design multiple choice questions okay this is something new for artists you know this is something new for art subjects so basically the outcome of all the learning that we did through art education was a great learning for the teachers which they would have never done if this would have not happened and the students who got an opportunity to be with themselves they came out with a challenge to show their art teachers that we are better and this is what we need to do and you need to understand our work better okay so i think these were the positive aspects so earlier art architecture was only considered to learn the tools and techniques but now the communication of ideas and the boldness which both the parties got to communicate have resulted in a very positive impact so i would look at digital education a uh, digital education as a great medium to communicate teacher had to learn new softwares student had to use new tools and they had no choice but to learn and i think this is very good very very rightly said uh, professor mishra and i think uh, very well said like you have to be creative to teach creative uh, i think this is and i think uh, just to summarize what you said like there is a shift in a pedagogy yeah. of the teaching so after uh, in this pandemic and after pandemic uh, i would like to move to professor segal uh, in your university also lot of courses are there around animation and architecture so how you are dealing this creativity and innovation in our students first i would like to acknowledge what professor mishra has said you know uh, when this pandemic has started a uh, new thing that we call it as the necessity is the mother of invention and especially you know if i exclude the stem uh, you know courses the science technology engineering and management but if i take into account the liberal arts i think uh, we okay. have lost him actually we are not able to hear him sorry yeah i think the internet is not good okay so let's move to professor singh uh, professor the number singh, of publications uh, uh, the number of publications which has increased even if i take our record our patent filing has also record increased so you know the creativity has come up and on a lighter note also the students who were never speaking in a class they start writing it on a chat box and that sir this is my question because that type of change we have experienced uh, during this uh, digital era and at the same time uh, what professor mishra was sharing uh, on the evaluation part yes a drastic change uh, what we call it the concept of question banks was introduced and uh, then again it's a shuffling of those questions because we don't want the same question to be for everyone so there was methods and you know 
systems which were being developed uh, since we are a uh, multidisciplinary university so for us uh, these changes and development is very easy for us so but at the same time for a teacher uh, earlier it was around 8 and 10 questions if it say it especially with respect to the liberal arts but when when they have to develop uh, these multiple choice questions it's a drastic change and uh, you know acknowledging uh, what professor ak singh has said you know the pedagogy and the bloom's taxonomy especially you know with these young teachers uh, they actually in the last one year have experienced that and coming to the another aspect of uh, you know creativity second in the interest also, of time in the interest of time let's take others view and then we'll okay. come back to you uh, professor singh uh, what's your view how your university is uh, um, bringing the creativity and innovation in this blended mode uh sisi university has the advantage of uh, having the diversity in terms of uh, performing arts dance you know odyssey and kathak and all that bharatanatyam on the one hand and uh, architecture on the other hand uh, agriculture on one side management on the other science computer science emerging technologies and like that so it's a complete blend uh, if one wants to be you know learning uh, uh, other aspects what stem and journey from stem to steam as per the new national education policy we say you know it's a journey from science engineer uh, stem science technology engineering and mathematics to a in between that you know uh, arts also in that steam stem to steam so that advantage we had from the very beginning that we have the yogic science also on the, on the one side osteopathy on the other uh, ayurveda now we are starting the allopathy hospital also so all these are under one roof you know in one one university so the student have wide variety of, of choices that what uh, elective general elective they want to take and then we created a very new initiative called mission 4040 for the students uh, one of the items in that what what is 40 40 is the 40th year of art of living our you know founder pooja gurudev shri shri ravi shankar ji started art of living 40 years ago so so to uh, you know commemorate 40 years of art of living we said we will start 40 initiatives like uh, professor sagal was talking about uh, you know patents filing have gone up and all that so uh, 40 one of the initiative is 40 patents to be filed and published during this period uh, 40 startups uh, to be launched during this period like that so uh, in our university also uh, we have 62 uh, startups now we have uh, 69 uh, you know uh, uh, that pay patents uh, published so it has seen a quantum jump from the point of view of students what you are talking about we said 40 active clubs with 40 unique initiatives so it's not only the classroom teaching learning process that the creativity is required you know creativity is also required in all the other areas beyond the class we say 20% of the learning actually takes place in the classroom and 80% is outside the class so there must be avenues outside the classroom like if the physical sports activities are closed so we said you should you know compete in 40 competitions uh, outside this you know jo abhi tak kar rahe the usse bahar wale mein 40 you should compete in that so one team actually collected all the competitions which were available online and it was you know more than hundreds of competitions that were shared with them and uh, they easily competed in more than 40 actually that so the ability to give them options that they can showcase their creativity in the areas that they want to showcase and that is the beauty of you know uh, unleashing the potential of an individual from the core you know connecting to the core and then able to di- display that, that demonstrate that in areas that was, beyond the structured that was really nice and i think uh, what you the art of living uh, the whole Uh, philosophy of art of living you bringing it that is some quite interesting uh, i would like to move to dr talwar and um, in your uh, 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 institution also i have seen lot of courses are there where uh, innovation and creativity is very very important and integral part so what's your view uh, on this how you are uh, helping your students so i think digital learning uh, or online learning or blended learning whatever you want to call it uh, you know is is obviously here to stay even after you come back to campus when the students come back to campus um 
you know, the, the whole mindset has changed. You know, the whole approach to, yes, the students were wanting a lot of peer learning. Whatever was uh, um, a pleasure to do, you know, um, till three in the morning, you're doing projects in, you know, in, in the library, uh, group uh, areas, or whatever. At times right now was being viewed as, uh, as a pressure because you're sitting at home, you're individual, you're wherever you are. So, yes, there's unleashing of creativity by yourself, self um, induced in a way but at the same time there was this pressure of um, you know having to do possibly by ourselves the peer learning system was not necessarily in operation you couldn't possibly pat uh, each other on the back because you did some nice presentation so all those things were kind of uh, missing and I guess that's the lure of you know students wanting to come back they want to experience campus life but this whole idea of digital learning is here to stay because you know uh, you know what uh, Professor Singh or Professor Mishra or even uh, Professor Segal were talking about, uh, you know, this whole idea of continuity of learning is important, not just about what happens in the classroom, it's about what happens outside the classroom is also important. So even if you are in the class and you are providing a certain level of instruction, you are you know, going through a certain teaching process, uh, the student has to be able to, you know, work himself or by herself, right? And the digital media is able to help over there, uh, quite frankly, the LMS system or um, you know, let's say a lot of flip, flipped approaches to learning. Having said that, I think that requires a certain psychological change as well. The student has to be ready to be by himself or herself to do what is required, go through the textbook, go through the content, go through the case study. But online learning, look, at the end of the day, you know, being part of management education for a long period of time, uh, we're obviously preparing students for a future that none of us are kind of aware of, let's say post five, eight, ten years down the line. Right, so we're not we we can't always say hey we're preparing for this particular uh, job. We can't possibly say that because that job may not even exist, right? So we can prepare them to live a, a better life, and that living a better life is around creativity, is around decision making, is around problem identification, is around problem solving, is around communication, is around understanding themselves. And I think uh, you know a combination of um, uh, you know offline online learning. Uh, if done the right way, can actually help. You know, um, simulations have become much more nimble. Um, a lot of students love to do simulation-based activity, electronic simulation, gaming. And a lot of this has now become much easier and much more acceptable simply because you're doing it through the online medium. Right? So um, the shift in pedagogy has required a constructivist approach to learning. That's what I'm just saying. So if we, as as, um, as as instructors or we as academics are able to create a constructivist approach to learning in the classroom, that's when we can benefit uh, through uh, you know, what we are actually talking about today, right. the online digital-based learning, yes. Uh, absolutely correct, uh, Dr. Talwar. And I think what I uh, said initially, like creativity, innovation is now very, very essential. Uh, doesn't matter uh, in which domain you are, uh, you require this. And I think we in, in Adobe also, we are pushing creativity a lot because our core thing is creativity. And uh, with our digital tools, we are helping the students to uh, uh, bring out best from, from themselves and become a best version of themselves with the help of creativity. Uh, this whole conversation with all of you, this bring me one thought, like there are broadly two streams of knowledge, science, technology, what we say, STEM, and then the other side is the art, design, language, and the creativity. Now, my question to all of you is like, uh, uh, even in the new national education policy, uh, it's uh, there is a there is a pointer around multidisciplinary education. So, uh, earlier students, some students have a fear with the digital technology, with the digital software, design softwares. How much you feel like now the digital tools and digital uh, technology uh, in terms of uh, learning new creativity is very, very important in terms of, in terms of new media, AR, VR, uh, animation. And these things are important to um, uh, bring your ideas to life and to portray your idea in a more visual manner with uh, with everyone. So I would like to start with Professor Mishra, if you can shed some light and then we'll move to other people also on it. So in the, uh, Professor Mishra, you are on mute. So in the interest of time, uh, uh, yeah. briefly, and then we, uh, yeah. we will move. Uh, yeah, I realize that. Thank you, Yaman. Thank you. Uh, I would just like you to know that uh, 
um, the national education policy um, is a wonderful thing to happen to our country. At JJ campus, we have fine art, applied art, design, architecture as multidisciplinary subjects. So a, a student of architecture takes up multidisciplinary learning. He does photography as an art form. He does sculpture as an art form, as an additional subject. So anybody who comes out of JJ School of Art has good idea of paintings, sculptures, photography, stage design besides architecture. So this is what is possible now because of NEP, it has now become legitimate. The second thing wonderful about NEP is this academic bank of credits. I think this has helped our ideas of letting a student go out into industry, do some work with the professionals, come back after one and a half, two years and join back the academics to complete it. And I have realized this, that when we did this for architecture, some students who leave midway after third year and come back to do their two years later after an internship, their academic performance is wonderful. They're, they basically become not only a generator of knowledge, they also bring in the latest technology and the latest outgoings and the latest developments in the industry, which actually helps education, all right? So I would say that uh, NEP is in a way happening in our school. And I think it is a wonderful thing. And lastly, there are no geographical boundaries now. It is possible for me to invite a MIT professor or a Berkeley professor or a professor from University of Birmingham to be part of our academic program. To collaborate. So our studios, design studios, are already doing collaborations with some of the design schools in Europe and America, which I think has brought a lot of diversity and a lot of nourishment to learning. Now learning has become enjoyable. Now learning has become multidimensional. And I think NEP really helps us do it this way. So this is uh, what I wish to say. And I think um, it is going here to stay. Like Dr. Vishal Talwar said, that now digital medium of education is something that we cannot uh, live without. And it is now possible that every teacher, you know, we, we gifted every teacher with an iPad and a pencil so that now he actually prepares notes yeah. and project it on the screen. You know? So you learn it by drawing, you learn it by doing, and you learn it by seeking feedbacks. And we all learned it from other teachers everywhere else in the world. So suddenly my teachers or suddenly our teachers in my environment felt that they were not exposed to several things. And this is what promoted them towards learning. And it was voluntary. They were not told to do it. They decided to do it. And I think this is wonderful for education. I think one very important word uh, I got in your in, in your thought, like multidimensional, uh, like now students, if you have to be creative and innovative, you cannot be stick only one thing. Uh, it's the time has gone where you will say only I will learn one thing and I will move into. Uh, you that. become multiple talented. You know, yes. Yeah, yeah. You should aware about all the things. So, uh, Professor Singh, uh, uh, how, how your college uh, is... Uh, helping students in this multidisciplinary creativity and the realization of to the student that creativity is something very, very essential in the current time. As I shared earlier with you also that uh, we have these avenues uh, of the diversity. Even we allowed MOOCs programs, you know, and of uh, course, ERA actually gave at that time free options also. And many companies uh, have started giving their you know, programs or courses in the online mode. Uh, animation courses are there. Even Adobe, we have signed agreement with Adobe. We have signed agreement with IBM. We have signed an agreement with Palo Alto. In Infosys, uh, people were here yesterday. So we have, uh, I mean, in the last about one and a half years, uh, we have signed MOUs with about 60 institutions. India and abroad, as the previous speaker was saying, there is no boundary now. 
so whosoever you, you can you know, actually approach and people are willing to help you that is the experience that that we got you know that uh, there is no nobody who generally says no to you the only thing is whether uh, you are able to uh, organize as per his convenience so he may not be available on say day 1 or 2 or 3 something like that but if you really want him he would be available for you on some day so that that is the beauty the best of the uh, you know uh, expertise is available to you and uh, you know from anywhere in the world there is no boundary for the teaching learning process now so newer and newer things can be experimented and uh, there is sky is the limit as we say that is the scenario now so uh, in the interest of time i just want to bring one thought and let's move on to the other uh, part of the this session like whenever any innovation or like after listening you uh, all uh, whenever any innovation or discovery takes place uh, it is not immediately absorbed like you all said it takes time to live with it and it make uh, part of daily life or, or, or a human habit digital creativity is still and digital technology is still viewed as a state of the art way of uh, you know instruction like and this is why uh, our prime minister also discussed this uh, issue in his ongoing us visit with adobe ceo mr shantanu narayan if you all have might have seen uh, in today morning newspaper so uh, my question to all of you is like how can we make this digital creativity learning a way of life for all the students because still i i can see that many students think creativity again i i'm going back to my sentence creativity related to art and design i don't have to deal with that i am a engineering student i will go into that so how can we uh, make a uh, life uh, like a a way of life the creativity digital creativity uh, so if any one of you can start and want to shed some light on it you know and digital creativity is no longer a domain of a specific discipline now okay. like digital marketing i mean fintech so you name a field and digitization is going to disrupt the way things have been done in the past i mean hiring a car taxi now uber and ola and all that it's because of the digital only na that this segment has been you know disrupted your uh, ola and all that and then this what, what you call um, the hiring of the space uh, i mean every field you name a field and you will find this this because of the digital technology that that field has been disrupted so there is no segment of life there is no sector of the industry or any any aspect of life which is not going to be impacted yesterday i was li- listening to a speaker a minister he was talking about agriculture so he gave so many examples how digital technology is going to actually you know change the way uh, agriculture farmers and all those things you know it's it's you can't find a single segment where it is not going to happen Like what professors have said, and uh, Jaman, uh, the point here is, you know, giving an example. Uh, in our university, the creativity and critical thinking is a core subject. So all the students of all the streams are going to study it. It's a two-credit course. But what that whenever assignment is given, you know, to link the creativity with his or her domain, you know, uh, like. as is have said linking the creativity in the management area and linking the digital transformation and creativity using now the tools there are a lot of free open source tools which are available the students and faculties can use that in order to have these digital form of transformations and creativity and linking it with the domain this is from my side yes got it uh, dr tawar yeah, so i think uh, this is obviously a good point and creativity fundamentally is ingrained in every uh, child that is born that's what we at least i fundamentally believe i guess something happens on the way and this something is around uh, exams and marks and expectations and many other things so i think um, you know that particular aspect of curiosity that particular aspect of being able to um, reflect and be creative whether it is in the on a paper mode paper and pencil mode or whether it is on the electronic mode or digital mode i think it should be strongly encouraged uh is maybe we as a uh, uh, you know uh, 
as a, as a society, as education establishments, we should try and do more and encourage and keep that flame alive uh, in a way. The other uh, request to a lot of people um, you know, who have amazing tools and software is to try and increase the access to people, right? I think, um, I guess what's happening is that, um, uh, you know, a lot of these tools, yes, some of them are obviously open source. It requires people to train you to be able to use them. But as the uh, Shogata Mitra's model suggests, that, you know, a hole in the wall kind of project that, you know, it doesn't require too much of, uh, you know, training for you know kids or younger adults to be able to pick something up very quickly. So, you know, I think I, uh, you know, fundamentally my, my belief here is that the access is important. You know, you know we uh, as a country, uh, there's a lot of variance, right? So this variance um, uh, across the nation, how do you try and reduce that? How do you increase access to people who at this moment may not get the opportunity and see their creativity going and see that then building up what we would like to build up as a nation? And my other point on the Indian education policy is it's, it's, it's great uh, in terms of being able to offer uh, avenues for people, opening up the curriculum, opening up the mind, opening up, you know, the, inherently there's uh, people want choices. Inherently, uh, consumers want choices. Students want choices. They want to learn uh, management along with a little bit of technology. They want to also want to learn Indian economic history. And, you know, I guess new education policies will facilitate and enable that going forward. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, I think I think you have summarized it uh, very well. Like how this uh, new education policy is uh, uh, telling everyone that the multi being a multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary is the need need of the time. Uh, Professor Mishra, uh, uh, I know, like I wanted to understand your view. Like uh, how this multidisciplinary and digital creativity. Uh, is uh, happening in your institution, how your faculties and students are coping up with this uh, digital creativity by using digital uh, designing softwares and like that? Well, uh, they simply love it. Those who had not learned how to use it, learned it. And once after learning it, if you are able to exploit it, to express your ideas better, they cannot stop using it. You know, it's like the it's like a drug. You know, it's, if you are able to use a Revit software to be able to do plan, section, elevation together, you become better at design. Earlier, we had AutoCAD, which allowed us to do two-dimensional drawing. It was only plan, and then you had to do a separate section. But now, with the digital tool learning, which is a Revit software. While you are doing plan, the section is actually generated simultaneously. Then the use of VR, okay, virtual reality, is actually letting you design a space and seeing it after having designed it. So you actually see a space that is going to be executed later now, which has helped a lot of people take good design decisions. And this is what Everyone loves it, you know, because now you're able to explain your ideas better to your clients and your clients love you for doing it. Third thing, the digital learning tools have also encouraged slow learners to become fast learners. I think this is the best thing to happen. You know, there were slow learners who said, who will do the drawing? It will take three hours to do the drawing. But software has actually motivated you to take up drawing because while you do it, it helps you become better at it when it comes to the tools, but it also helps you think what you have not been able to think. All right. So this is something that now uh, art and architecture schools cannot live with. But besides that, uh, sorry, Mr. Mishra, we have, we have only six minutes left. So the final uh, question I have for all of you, and because we talk about students' education, creativity, at the, at the end, students either do a job or do a 
do any business and you know there uh, in this era in this time lot of uh, digital businesses are coming up many many people have started digital businesses i'm not talking about the e-commerce typical website but more like a digital where you don't require any kind of offices now my final and i will give you all of you only one minute or one and a half minute to how your institution helping your students to use these digital uh, learning digital creativity digital innovation to um, set up their own digital businesses or their uh, do their own maybe entrepreneurial kind of a work because everyone have their own aspiration and dreams to set up their 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 work so uh, uh, I, if i like to start with uh, professor singh if you can tell me in one one and a half minutes yeah yeah we have been given funding by msme government of india for startups uh, each of the startup will get 15 lakhs of rupees as a grant funding kind of a thing and uh, 20 startups are being onboarded now they are in the first phase uh, phase of that as i shared with you 62 uh, startups have already come up so uh, the journey is basically you know how how quickly you can and we have also adopted the innovation and in startup policy introduced by government of india so apart from nep 2021 good policy which also came was this innovation and in startup policy so faculty members can also be participant in the startups of the students so they can co create it's not only the student to create a startup it's about you know group of people whether he is an employee a staff member or a teaching faculty member or a student or a group of these and some people from outside also they all can join together and create enterprises so that is the new ecosystem which is coming up and government is supporting a lot for we are also a startup uh, you know from the odisha government we we have got grants from them also so there is very great uh, ecosystem that has been created and lot of outputs are coming from there thank you thank you oh, professor sagal quick quick thought on it uh, quick yes definitely 30 seconds to 1 minute uh, i have seen especially in one and a half years uh, you know the students have now become teaching assistants also with these digital tools uh, we have a technology business incubator and we what we have seen especially the students who know computers and the professors uh, you know who were lagging in these uh, digital education uh, tools so these uh, students have become a tool for those professors also I, i remember that there was a chemical engineering professor and this student start making animations of the processes for him okay. and uh, he said yes, sir i know it's going to be a new thing he don't want uh, the same youtube and other things to be used so as you rightly said yes if we give lot of tools uh, to our students the creativity and their you know skills are available and uh, in the next 5 to 10 years uh, the indian students are not going to be lagging behind especially in this uh, digital era okay. thank you thank you uh, dr talwar your your view yeah so i think uh, my view is that most uh, indian educational setups especially from a professional standpoint tech management are largely designed as agile setups wherein the predominant expectation is a, is a good placement so which automatically uh, means that uh, all the processes have been designed uh, the mindset has been framed but in the last few years there's a lot more focus on the ecosystem uh, trying to create the entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, and you'll see a lot of that happening right now in uh, you know uh, universities management setups going beyond lip service around creation of entrepreneurial ecosystems the the, the gig economy the reliance on self employment the reliance on entrepreneurship in india uh, as well as the rest of the world will get definitely higher our focus uh, here is on the teaching the research as well as the incubation from an entrepreneurial standpoint so look um, the, te- the, the curriculum has to be changed in the interest of time i think i Thanks. i got you, uh, your you. point uh, yeah uh, professor mishra final wording uh, how your institution helped yeah. you see um, we are a government institution but we are not very lucky with the funding okay during covid times funding is a problem but we are very lucky to have our alumni yeah who are actually wanting to see our students shift from drawing board to ipads shift from drawing board to digital connect so a lot of our students who graduate find no problem with placements because somebody is always ready to take we have been very lucky in comes in terms of our design and architecture so we have 0% unemployment as far as i am concerned yeah but 
let me tell you the funding is coming from csr funding is coming from alumni funding is coming from building industry softwares are being otherwise we can't afford softwares got it but uh, professor rajiv i got a red flag to wrap up the session so uh, uh, not an issue uh, thank you thank you all the all the panelists esteemed panelists for your pointers and very relevant indeed uh, thank you for providing your overall valuable uh, input so in just two minutes if i can uh, try to wrap it up all the things which we discussed like so it was like uh, just to summarize it the relevant significance of face to face and online instruction process training a student to become creative and innovative through online digital technology and digital creativity uh, the promotion of multidisciplinary education instead of sticking to the traditional single stream instruction the way through which digital learning can be made a way of life and um every student can embrace the digital creativity uh, and finally the formative assessment of like impact of digital creativity and technology on the student so i think these are the pointers which we discuss and thank you all of you thank you for your time and for all your uh, insights which you provided us and i really uh, personally uh, 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 got lot of insights from uh, all of you and uh, if any one of you from our viewers if they want to know how adobe can help their institution uh, to bring the digital creativity and digital innovation uh, uh, with in the, with their students so you can reach out to us and with that said thank you everyone thank you all the panelists for their time and have a great day thank you thank you thank you everyone for joining us here today hope to be in touch with you all thank you thank you thank you very much for inviting जय गुरुदेव सिंह साहब जय गुरुदेव जय गुरुदेव